to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. So Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, With great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. Notice now, they had a mandate, haven't been mentored by Jesus as disciples for about three and a half years. When Jesus resurrected according to Acts chapter 1, the Bible says that when he rose from the dead, he had moments with them again for a period of 40 days discussing the matters of the kingdom. Is that true? And then they asked him a question in Acts chapter 1 when you begin your reading from verse 5. They said, will you at this point restore the nation of Israel? And he replied by saying, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8 now says, but you shall receive power. What did he say we will receive? Power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, he said, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Judea, in Samaria, and Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Now the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 that the apostles gave witness to the resurrection with great power. It took more than oratory. It took more than philosophy. It took more than the intelligence of men. In other words, the church did not grow just by philosophy and human principles. That it was with great power they gave witness to the resurrection and then the bible says something that is so comforting that great grace was upon them all that means every believer including the ones looking at me can be recipients you can walk in the reality of this dimension of grace that can help you to bear witness of the resurrected christ in truth do you know our sermons and our evangelism our communications of the gospel seem to not be as powerful as we desire to be because it is not backed up with power paul said when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but with the demonstration of power he said that your faith will not rest upon sophia the wisdom of men but the power of god until and unless we restore the supernatural to the church we restore the supernatural to politics we restore the supernatural to administration to leadership to business until we are able to give witness the world has a right to doubt the resurrection of jesus after all when jesus rose again remember satan orchestrated men and paid them to say he is not alive and that ministry still continues till today for every time satan oppresses people and goes without check for every time satan puts our territory under siege corporately whether as a result of terrorism as a result of bad governance as a result of whatever all of these things are indices that spite the resurrection of christ and there has to be a people who arise with understanding and with power who can give witness to the resurrection that we should not have people who are sick people who are depressed people who are oppressed full of demons and the only thing we tell them is psychology and counseling and therapy as important as that is you do not counsel demons to leave you cast them away are we together there are lovely destinies that have been under the yokes and the siege of darkness sincere people who love the lord by the privilege of what i do i've, I've seen people men and women well-meaning people under all kinds of bondages 
a plethora of ill circles of pain that continue to recycle themselves and the painful part is some of these people are sincere church people they love jesus with all their heart some of them have never as it were given into any kind of compromise consciously and willfully and yet their lives does not bear witness to the truth something is wrong this is why this conference was organized to challenge us that we need to restore the authenticity of the message of the cross if it is true that jesus died if it is true that he defeated sin hell and the grave if it is true that jesus resurrected if it is true that he seated at the right hand of the father there must be a demonstration of that reality I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ he says for it is the power more than the discussion more than the sermon more than a, an exegesis of scripture it is the power unto salvation for everyone that believes that means it should be true in America it should be true in Europe it should be true in in, in Jalingo it should be true in Nigeria if it is true that the same Lord is rich unto all Are we learning so settle it for a fact ladies and gentlemen that it is the will of God for us to be witnesses of his resurrection being a witness of his resurrection has nothing to do with being a man of God being a witness of his resurrection has nothing to do with a preacher being a witness of his resurrection is our corporate mandate John chapter 1 6 and 7 there was a man sent from God the Bible says his name was John seven says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that through him men might believe Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 he says you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be he didn't say you shall be preachers he didn't say you shall be politicians those things are a description of the geography of your witness but our corporate mandate please look up our corporate mandate as believers is that we have been called to be witnesses a witness is the validator of a claim you do not need a witness in a court of law until there is a contention legal people am i right on that yes so if someone attempts to to disprove the validity of a claim the judge will usually require that a witness come and that witness is asked to stand and tell his side of the truth and it is a stronger witness if that witness has an evidence is that true yeah. if we want to see the end time revival that we have so prophesied some of our fathers of faith prophesied it in their lifetime today they have joined the cloud of witnesses it will remain a prophetic word until we understand the dynamics of accessing power with god to give witness to the resurrection of jesus christ with power this is more than being a good preacher this is more than preaching well this is more than greek and hebrew words we're talking about lives that are dying we're talking about destinies that are under the siege of satan if you believe what i'm saying say amen. amen let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven becoming a sign and a wonder is my destiny and your destiny in christ becoming a living wonder it is given to us by redemption however there are always requirements when it has to do with establishing spiritual realities please pay attention there are many believers who know what the word of god says should be but have not pressed further to understand the dynamics the dynamics of making power with god become a reality in your life hallelujah and i believe the assignment of this conference myself and all the ministers of the lord that god will be using is to work in synergy and help be able to present to you something that represents a template something that will help you to be able to access power in experience at the end of this conference we should not just share the grace and say we have finished the one for this year 
there should be such a dramatic impact in your life you should go back even this night principalities and powers should know that you came you spent time in god's presence you access power and you can return back and give witness to the resurrection there are a few keys wherever we stop tonight then we'll leave it there and we'll continue please make up your mind let me encourage you that you will be very active in every one of the sessions and then you will encourage your loved ones i understand that it's been aired on television and a lot of other channels on the internet so there's no excuse god's people need to hear the truth bishop said something john 1 5 that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not time does not turn darkness to light no it is the entrance of his word that gives light so saying one day you go better is just a is, is a sociological way of consoling yourself time does not change anything time only reveals it takes light the bible says and god called the light day and the darkness he called night so it is not the movement of the clock that calls it day the day light comes that light that moment becomes day he called the light day and the darkness he called night key number one what does it take to be a witness of the resurrection with power with results with grace what does it take to command power with god upon the earth number one the first key that i wrote here is you must have an experience with god please write it down you must have an experience with god daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 you must have an experience with god if you're still writing please write this the god you experience is the god you will reveal to your world the god you experience is the god you will reveal or present to your world you cannot present to your world a god you have not experienced hallelujah the first requirement in order of priority if you want power with god you want to walk in the supernatural you want your life to be a living wonder with great power to give witness to the resurrection you must have an experience with god daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 here's what it says but the people the be part that do know their god he said they shall be strong you notice the bible never said the people that do know god because god means many things in our world today for someone god means an idol for someone god means himself for someone god means his certificate so it is important to have a definition to your understanding of god the people that do know their god two rewards will follow them number one capacity they shall be strong number two they shall do exploit not talk exploit not wish exploit not write on exploit they shall do exploits hallelujah notice the sequence the first is knowledge the second transformation become then the third exploits the people that do know it starts with knowledge then they shall be they shall become transformation and then they shall do exploits hallelujah most believers do not have an experience with god respectfully speaking most preachers do not have an experience with god we live in a world where we have proposed many things about god that we do not have an experience of people have written books about a god they do not know people have presented series and series on of teachings about a god they found in the bible or a god they got as an inheritance from grandfather or father until he becomes your god you cannot give witness to the resurrection an experience with god is someone learning already job chapter 42 and verse 5 job was speaking he says that which i have heard with the hearing of the ear he says that now my eyes see thee i have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear but now my eyes see thee 
you can doubt what you hear but you don't doubt what you see someone can call my name and your voice can sound familiar i may need verification to be sure it is you but when i see you i know it is you is that true i cannot confuse bishop for instance for someone else i cannot confuse his dear wife for someone else because it is more than hearing i am seeing but the people that do know their god they shall be strong listen an experience with god is the basis for your confidence in this kingdom an experience with god is the basis for your confidence in this kingdom please write it down man of god an experience with god will become your the basis for your confidence not just the loyalty of men not just the endorsement of well-intentioned people you need an experience with god that is beyond the vacillations of humans human beings will believe you today and disbelieve you tomorrow systems may seem to work in your favor today and then fight you tomorrow you need a level of confidence that is 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 stable but i know whom i have believed he says and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day i know him hallelujah you would notice this sequence all through scripture every time god desired to use a man or a woman in order of priority the first thing he would do is to call that person and give that person an experience even if it is a dimensional experience and that experience becomes their message becomes their mandate ministry is more than a sermon ministry is more than an allocation to pastor a branch ministry is derived from an experience with god until you have an experience with god every sermon you preach is a borrowed sermon until you have an experience with god that which you propose you will not have the power to defend so for instance we say a lot about the god that heals we say a lot about the god that delivers my precious worship people we stand on stage and we sing songs that continue to implicate us because we do not have the experience with god to defend our propositions for instance we call him the lion of the tribe of judah do you know the implication of that name we call him the way maker we call him the miracle worker and yet our lives continue to live as if the way maker is no longer alive there is something listen when we bring potency to our propositions the world will come to listen to us when they discern that our words are barren of results then they will no longer pay attention jesus saw a tree that had figs green leaves attracting his attention and even jesus was tempted and he came and he did not find any fruit he did not advise the tree he caused it for attracting people with a semblance of results and yet not having it this will inevitably be the lot of any christian who creates a a, a semblance of power a semblance of scripture a semblance of faith and then you draw people and when they come there is nothing to offer so we tell them come jesus christ will heal then they come and go back with no healing we say come jesus christ can save and they say including my son yes he saved saul and turned him to paul and for decades that son remains there and nothing happens let god be true and all men liars jesus still saves jesus still heals jesus still delivers is someone understanding the teaching tonight everybody say an experience with god you see let me tell you the truth by the privilege of god's grace and i've been honored to have a relationship with bishop foreman and his dear wife i know that he's a lovely man if someone stands here and tells me bishop and his wife are two lovely people he's not giving me a new revelation it's only a confirmation of an experience that i already have and then if someone comes here and says um bishop and his dear wife they are not nice to me i said well i respect your experience but i will define them based on my experience listen 
do you know the reason why people backslide and run away from god aside from the challenges is because they were not standing on the rock in the first place how they got saved how they are mentored while they are safe already puts them at a risk anything that shakes them no job no husband no wife no child immediately they say this god is not faithful listen if we do not strengthen the conviction of our people with an experience with god there will be a decline in christianity in the next 15 to 20 years respectfully speaking this is what we see happening in europe A very fearful and disturbing decline do you know why because parents transferred a faith practice to children with no conviction and no experience they only inherited it and now that we live in a generation of intelligence and inquiry the generation before us was a generation of loyalty whether they understood or not they respected it this generation will ask questions and that's why many people are losing out on the faith we need to restore the power component and experience with God. He said, will you also go? He said, to whom shall we go? You alone have the word of life. That is, that, that is a language of experience. Listen, many denominations in this nation were founded by people. Some of them were not so educated, but one testimony is that they knew God. They knew God for sure hallelujah i had the privilege and the honor of my grandfather being one of the founders of the denomination in the north and i can tell you as little children we saw a man that knew god in his capacity they didn't have all the knowledge they didn't have everything but they knew god we need to restore most people talk about god sing about god write about god but believe me when i tell you he said why do you call me lord lord that means there are many you can do activities around church you can become a deacon you can become a reverend just having a christian title is not equivalent to relationship no 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 whether you are an apostle or you are a, you know a man of god you can have all of those by reason of experience hallelujah at the end of his life can you imagine a man with such spiritual exploits at the end of his life here's what he had to say that i may know him out of the many things he could he could wish for how would paul paul who saw jesus from the beginning of his life was in the wilderness of arabia for over 18 years this was someone who was already a pharisee he was not ignorant as far as the law was concerned the jewish customs he was a master and yet he encountered the god of the bible and at the end of his life all he had to say was not just that i may conquer more grounds not just that i will make more names he said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering the fact that we are not praying that prayer means there is something we have not gotten because if you see what paul saw a man who got to a point where he said for me oh, to live is christ and to die is gain what sort of a man is that what orientation gave him that conviction that whether you live or die as far as walking with god is concerned you cannot be cheated an experience with god when i started my walk with god it does not tire me to share this perhaps it may be the difference between my pursuits in my experience and many well-meaning believers when i started my work with god i never knew that a man of god could come and preach and they would wrap orange and banana and give you as a gift i didn't even know there was such a thing as that i didn't even know there was such a thing as clapping and honor and whatever it was a search for him not it i loved him and sought him because i sat in church i saw sick people return back we sang all kinds of hymns 
up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph over his foe he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign yet i looked around and i saw captivity i knew that the preachers were sincere people but i said no there has to be something I heard about men of God who would preach respectfully speaking and die on the stage I said is that how God rewards his people that is a bad way to market God I was sick myself and I needed God to come through for me in various ways I asked a few people questions the summary was that I did not have faith I said well the little i knew then what is faith in? for you to come to god is enough if i come to a doctor and i sit down and the doctor i mean your i've taken the pain of coming to the hospital that is faith enough and i had to begin to seek him to cry and to seek him can i tell you this may be why someone came here tonight because you are tired of certain things and is is already beginning to become a holy anger why did my father die okay thank god he is dead but there's something i need to find out so that me and my children will not die that way i i i, I thank god that it just happened like that but the bible says with long life i will satisfy you please don't be offended and if you want to command power you have to sustain the courage to confront certain things without biases how come all the people who love God in this family none of them can feed well and yet from time immemorial it is only Jesus that has been called in this family something must be wrong hallelujah something must be wrong an experience with God when you have an experience with God it becomes that is where the power comes from that is where the grace comes from that is where the message comes from i saw preachers who love the lord sincerely serving god with their lives i saw the quality of life of their children sincere people the children were suffering the men were suffering all because they decided to stand with the dignity of kingdom integrity i said something is wrong here satan seemed to have an upper hand over men and families and they would pray and pray supposedly father you are calling upon you and i watched situations deteriorate as they prayed prayer vigils chain prayers were still going on and yet those demons did not seem to be affected by those prayers i knew immediately that something was already wrong hallelujah when i discovered that i made up my mind that my life will not be that way someone say in the name of jesus my life must command the supernatural go ahead and pray that prayer in one minute let it be from the depth of your heart my life must command the supernatural hallelujah praise the Lord now very quickly so we'll pray there are three keys that can help you have an experience with God I'll just discuss this and then we'll stop for tonight three keys you want to have an experience with God a personal testimony with God key number one are you ready you must have genuine hunger and thirst an experience with God is not a gift it is a reward an experience with God is a harvest the seed is genuine hunger and thirst Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 until you are hungry enough to seek the Lord and you shall seek me is that in your Bible and find me when you search for me with all your heart you are the thirst you are the stream 
you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you are everything that is the song of hunger you are everything listen until you seek him more than preaching until you seek him more than ministry until you seek him more than ambition ladies and gentlemen i tell you that i if i don't claim to know many things but this one i can tell you the protocol of an encounter it starts with hunger hunger that is beyond money hunger that is beyond fame hunger that is beyond revelation greek and hebrew words hunger that is beyond power that is the kind of hunger that leads you to an experience with god is someone learning already hunger hunger and thirst most believers love god but they love him passively matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness it leads them with an assurance that they shall be filled i do not know one person who dedicated his life to seek god and ask questions that god did not come through for i by the privilege of god's grace i have studied about revivals across this nation the history of the church in nigeria and across several continents i have studied revivals in europe revivals across islands revivals across places every major move of god starts when men take him seriously you cannot take god as a necessary luggage and find his power and his grace mm -mm. Mm -mm. please someone understand what god is telling us tonight my heart is thirsty for your living spring my soul is thirsty for you all that i long for is found in your love you are everything i need until you get to that point you are the thirst and you are the stream you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life Truly you are everything. Listen, by reason of this conference, some of you, eh, after this conference, you should go for a retreat. Cancel all these unnecessary ministrations that distract people to keep making a mockery of your Christian experience. Lord, I need to stay with you. I'm tired of presenting a God that I do not know. I'm tired of preaching a message as a man of God and going back and discussing with my wife. I hope what I said was right because I'm not even sure myself. Come on now, please. I'm tired of giving excuses. When people come and say, man of God, why did you say God bless you and yet nothing changed? I'm tired of lying to them. That is because you don't have faith. Proverbs 18 and verse 1, through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. There is a level of hunger. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The way God works, bar god does not reveal himself until he's needed more than any other thing that has stolen his place in your life you don't find god if you pursue him and something else uh -uh. the jealousy of god demands that he becomes your exclusive obsession if you are going to find him That 
will seek the Lord. Psalm 14 and verse 2. Let me tie up a few things here. Psalm 14 and verse 2. I found this scripture and it blessed me so much. Psalm 14 and verse 2. I don't know if you have it projected, but I'll read from here. Here's what it says. It says they looked the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God he was looking down is there any other someone on earth is there someone in Jalingo who needs to see my power is there someone who has dedicated himself to say Lord I may not understand you but what I see is not you when I see you, I will know this one is you. You've heard my story. This is how I started. Honestly, and it is still my obsession today. Lord, I want to know you more. I confess my ignorance. There are things I do not know. Don't let men clap you into mediocrity. There are still virgin dimensions in the spirit we have not seen let me tell you in bible days those of us today that you clap for would be ushers or in the welfare department the qualification we use for ministry today is what they used to serve in the welfare department what a spiritual atmosphere so i don't know what kind of grace the preachers had i know their secret is found in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually don't distract us with some of these mundane things we will give ourselves continually jalingo there is so much god wants to do and the lord has placed it upon his lordship to call this convergence and to call us it's time to stop playing church and stop playing all these things there are souls going to hell every day while we are giving excuses there are sick people who are backsliding and going back to shrines we are telling them stop going to a herbalist and they are asking you what is the alternative don't tell me to stop going to a native doctor when it worked for me for 10 years and you are bringing an alternative that is not working let us respect the desperation of men it's easy to criticize and say this one you are still visiting a herbalist give me an alternative that is superior when jesus came he said repent for the kingdom is at hand and he saw a woman with a withered hand he said stretch forth your hand i have brought the reality of the kingdom oh let our children not return back to idolatry because we are living in an environment that is not bearing witness to Jesus. I made up my mind that in my lifetime, as far as the mandate of God given to me is concerned, I will see that the name of Jesus does not fall to the ground. Whatever it will take to keep that name lifted, to wave the banner of Jesus from Nigeria to the ends of the earth, as far as there is breath in my nostrils, I will not watch my generation mock the integrity of the one who died for me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift through me. And here's the reason. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours listen some of us when we gave our lives to jesus it was not an affair we we're looking for we we're looking for a real it was a covenant as akin to marriage a relationship that we are here for the long haul not just some selfish thing to get power or get fame or get whatever it is please return someone god is speaking to you don't act like you are not hearing his voice return some of you this was not how you started your christian experience when you started with god 
you were given to a life of dedication but right now either failure or success all of them can do the same effect negative effect to your spiritual life failure can bring discouragement success can bring complacency both failure and success if not guided can destroy your life hunger 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 i'm a businessman from i will just come to church and contribute um you know when i sense a need that god wants bishop to have a new car i will carry 20 million or 30 million and give and buy him an suv wonderful obey god if he tells you to do but let me tell you the truth if that is the scope of your christian experience the fire that is coming upon the nations in this end time you will not be able to last i assure you it is those who bear roots downwards that will be able to bear fruit upwards there is no time for nominal christianity either you are with god genuinely and completely hallelujah someone say hunger say one more time say hunger hunger and thirst that is the first requirement if you want an experience with god apostle but i've been praying for a job and i don't have a job now why don't you use the opportunity now since you don't have a job you are not engaged somewhere why don't you use the opportunity and say lord i seek your face i know that i may not have that time can i tell you as most people you see who are on fire today they started before the burden of family life the burden of children the responsibility of leadership when they were free the bible says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth young people let me talk to you there are some of you who are just getting distracted with on unguarded use of social media i'm not saying it is wrong but i'm telling you if you don't defeat that demon of social media you will eat up the early stages of your life you will wake up and find out you are 30 you are 40 no spiritual investment you will turn left and see three or four children but no relationship that commands power use every time to seek god now use every time to seek god now use every time to seek god with your heart and with your life key number two what is the second key if you want to have an experience with god are you ready intense prayer and fellowship that is the second key you want an experience with god key number one is hunger and thirst you must hunger for his presence you must prioritize and value him more than money more than preaching those who are following by way of television following from your home the lord may be speaking to you right now you're following from nigeria from across africa europe america jesus is speaking to you for many people the language for you tonight is return god is saying return this is not how we started return i don't care if you're a preacher or whatever respectfully speaking return to the place of the altar samuel had the voice of god simply because he was lying down close to the ark number two intense prayer and fellowship jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 the bible says call unto me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not he leaves you with an assurance that if you call i will answer that means god responds to the call that cry of desperation oh may god restore the days where people can hold on to you don't hear it again that people lock themselves for three days praying and fasting not just for things lord show me something some of you men of god respectfully speaking remember how you started god brought me here to draw it again it's not condemnation but God is telling you, some of you, while you were on campus, this was the secret of the power. Return! No excuses. Prayer. Oh, I seek your face. I seek your face. The psalmist said, Oh Lord, you, my God, early will I seek you. My soul longs after you. 
in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water to see your power and your glory in my life even as I have seen in the sanctuary is someone learning restore the ministry of prayer in Jalingo again restore the ministry of prayer I submit to you five minutes prayer will not bring revival I submit to you once in a while emergency prayer he spake a parable Luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to fail first Thessalonians 5 17 he says to pray without ceasing does not just mean pray from morning till night it means be consistent prayer must be built into the system of your spiritual growth pastor pray businessman pray politician pray parents pray children pray prayer does not kill it empowers pray pray one of the major assignments of prayer is to transform you into superior spiritual versions Luke chapter 9 from verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed the he being Jesus now the Bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering as he prayed not before he prayed not as he wished as he prayed you can turn the fearful version of you into the warrior version of you in prayer are you hearing me you can turn the fearful version of you to a warrior version show me a man who is not serious with god submit that person methodically under guided mentorship to pray and i show you a wonder working version of that person you can fake power but you cannot fake relationship if you don't have a track record with god it will show someone say prayer you must learn to pray you must learn to pray let us restore every home in jalingo should become a prayer altar it has nothing to do with feeling whether you are spiritual or not you can start today how many fathers pray fathers if your children do not hear you praying they will not become prayer warriors don't say i am too busy how beautiful is it when children and are sleeping and the priest gets up and wears his priestly regalia 2 a.m. 3 a.m. and you are praying burning that incense of prayer one day your child will follow you you will drive him and he will not go back then the day you travel the angel of the Lord will wake him and he will start taking that position that I can assure you on that any man who is not given to prayer don't trust the visions they bring no worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain when you submit yourself to prayer among the many things that happens is your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit begins to be activated your discernment your perception your ability to perceive and receive spiritual things all of a sudden you begin to download revelations from the realm of the spirit god now can begin to trust you with things about your life and the others it has nothing to do with being a prophet you don't have to be a prophet to be prophetic being prophetic is a spiritual quality is a product of growth in the spirit number three what is the third key if you desire an experience with God high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination the scripture we read initially Job 33 and verse 3 call on to me and I will answer he says then when I'm done answering I will not stop there he says i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not so when you pray it ushers in it gives you room to also access knowledge superior spiritual revelation 
in this kingdom our dominion is at the instance of the mysteries of the kingdom that we understand matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching and he said it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven let's read job chapter 29 job chapter 29 follow carefully while i read beginning from verse 1 job chapter 29 beginning from verse 1 this was a man who manifested supernatural dimensions of grace and job is leading us is like a tour to explore his spiritual pathway to show us the secret behind him being a sign and a wonder are you ready pay attention moreover job continued verse 1 his parable and said all oh, that i were in the months past as in the days when god preserved me verse 3 when his candle you see the secret now when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness so there were two kinds of light that job was exposed to in order to be great the first was the lights that came upon his head illumination the second was the lights that was up his path direction you need those two kinds of light if you have direction without illumination you will still waste your time the light that shines upon your head and the light that shines upon your path these are the levels of lights that equip you for a life of exploits let's continue as I was in the days of my youth when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle when the Almighty was yet with me when my children were about me verse 6 it says when I washed my steps with butter and the rock poured out oil out rivers of oil seven when I went out to the gate through the city when I prepared my seat in the street we're reading to verse 10 the young men saw me and hid themselves because of the level of results the effulgence of the possibilities of the spirit that emanated from him the agent arose and stood up the princes refrained talking and laid their hands on their mouth the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleave to the roof of their mouth what a man job said you see all these exploits behind them were these mysteries the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle it was by his light upon my head and his light on my path thy word O lord he said is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path there cannot be dominion in ignorance there is a relationship between knowledge and power knowledge and dominion this kingdom is a kingdom that operates by light the bible says god made many lights but he made two great lights and the first light to rule the day and the second light to rule the night all lights rule whether it's in the day or the night light has always been associated with dominion the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light is that true isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 KJV says arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light we need light man of God you need light politician you need light for God to open your eyes to see what you need to do I pray and I cry for light as though I have never known him I have seen the value of light it is the light of God by his mercies that has brought us where we are today and it is that same light that will take us further let me tell you something please hear me do not pride yourself believing that you know enough the Bible says let every man who thinks that he knows knows that he does not know as he ought to that I may know him the realm of knowledge you want an experience with God that gives you power and turns you into a sign and a wonder that the first key is you must cultivate a hunger for him the second key 
is that you must give yourself to the ministry of prayer and fellowship apostle paul was mentoring the church in corinth and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ he said the love of god and the fellowship from the word koinonia the, the sharing together the participation of the holy spirit he said let it be with you nobody becomes great by mistake the same way no plant becomes a giant by mistake nobody carries a giant tree from the forest and brings it and keeps it it comes as a seed a seed that is well nurtured they that be planted in the house of god the bible says they will flourish in the courts of our god why because primarily they will be under the ministry of pastors according to jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you with wisdom and understanding Paul cried praying for the church in Ephesus from chapter 1 of Ephesians when you read from verse 15 he cried bowing his knees to the father of glory that he may grant unto the church the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened that they may know amplified says that your eyes be flooded with light please make it as a project to fight ignorance fight ignorance like you fight cancer fight ignorance like you fight satan the strength of darkness is ignorance jesus himself knew what he ought to do it is a risk in this end time to not know what to do an experience with god comes at the instance of genuine hunger an experience with god comes when you submit yourself let me tell you something about the ministry of hunger for a long time your hunger will not look like it will be filled but you just continue to press and honor that hunger the day god comes to you he comes with a compensation plan to reward you for your times of hunger and press did the bible not tell you that he is a rewarder hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that comes to god must come knowing two things number one that he is he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder it's not just what he does it is his name but not a rewarder of those who are christians a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and then for prayer oh prayer has rewards please do not let anyone fool you that prayer is just some labor that does not carry power no genuine prayer transforms you and then from the transformed you produces tremendous power through you james chapter 5 and verse 13 he said is any man afflicted he said let him pray the biblical recommendation to manage affliction is prayer when you read down to 18 he says elijah the fervent an effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much he says elijah was a man of like passion yet through the power of prayer he locked up the heavens that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years and when it was time to open the heavens it was still the same prayer we'll deal with that tomorrow and then the power of the word you must contend for the word you must contend for the word let me tell you something about the manifestation of the presence of god john chapter 14 when you read from verse 21 jesus was speaking and here's what he said he that keepeth my commands he says he it is that loveth me and i will love him is that in your bible and my father will love him and then he says we will manifest ourselves to him then when you read verse 23 he says it again that i will manifest myself to him god does not reveal himself at random he values his own presence enough of lukewarm christianity enough of one leg in and one leg out we have been called corporately to be witnesses of his resurrection according to acts 4 33 and with great power the apostles gave witness don't say i cannot speak english don't say i didn't have the privilege of going to school or i didn't go so far to be a professor or a doctor in as much as all of those provisions are advantages but i want you to be sure that for everyone who is available god is more than willing 
to make you a witness beginning here from jalingo and to the ends of the earth i believe with all my heart that beginning from tonight there are worshipers that will rise as witnesses there are businessmen who will rise as witnesses there are preachers who will rise as witnesses it's time to graduate from being a preacher to becoming a witness it's time to graduate from being a politician to being a witness can i tell you when you are a witness the one who sent you will defend you and make sure your visibility does not diminish because your presence is important for his reputation can we pray for a few minutes tonight i think this is good for the night who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roll to the king of kings we will praise adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day praise adonai all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise there are two prayer points we're going to pray tonight please don't be distracted prayer point number one lord i am still available and i desire you i dethrone everything that has exalted itself above you and i return back to the place of your presence please lift your voice and begin to pray let that be our first prayer tonight someone pray i dethrone everything you have my everything you have my everything you have my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me Lord you have my everything you have my everything you have my everything yeah. you have my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me you have my everything use all of me all of me lord you have my everything anoint my everything use my everything i release my everything you have my everything take all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus the final prayer point for tonight we are going to pray father every dimension of power and grace are located for my destiny are located for my call that has been aborted either through carelessness aborted either through lack of discernment i cry and call for a restoration go ahead someone pray someone pray there are some of us we should not be at this level as far as power with god is concerned as far as our prophetic destinies are concerned someone is praying where are the watchers pray 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 let there be a restoration of hunger restoration 
of fire restoration of power restoration of the gifts of the spirit restoration of honor restoration of grace hallelujah in the name of jesus please be patient just give me a few minutes and we're wrapping up i want you to listen carefully i want to speak over your life please do not miss any of these sessions and if bishop will allow and give permission then would we'll use hopefully tomorrow night to be able to minister to people and if bishop allows me i request that you come with your prayer request whatever has mocked god in your life i want you to write it let the god that answers by fire visit you hallelujah hear me there was a man in the bible called samson this was a nazarene who had a covenant hallelujah that his hair represented that which kept and preserved his honor his glory and his relevance but through carelessness licentiousness and everything in between he gave himself over very cheaply and there was this spirit that was trapped in a woman called delilah are we together delilah is not just a woman there was a woman who embodied delilah but delilah is a spirit it represents a spirit that is able to seduce men into perversion the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons the character of seduction is that it looks for a need in you and creates a temptation around it if you are not hungry seduction cannot come as food are we together so seduction is built around something that is a need in your life and so samson unfortunately fell into the trap of this woman and gave himself to the philistines but here's where i'm going to they took samson three things happened to samson as soon as they caught samson the first thing that happened was they cut his hair they destabilized the covenant the basis upon which every spiritual activity happened in his life the supernatural in his life was connected to his covenant and his consecration and the moment something happened with that that was it the next thing was they plucked out his eyes access to light notice the progression and then the third thing that happened was he was bound limitation this is always the character of satan when satan comes the first thing is he tries to fight your covenant he will search what is the basis for the favor in your life why are you a politician who is rising and he looks for it if a man of god is the one help that guy my god help them i'm about to pray please hear me if you're a man in politics here let me teach you a secret i know there are people pastors prophets let me say we men of god who take advantage of people but you have to know that your strength the strength of your excelling in this cosmos is your priesthood if your priesthood is not strong you will not stand whether a businessman whether a politician unfortunately unbelievers know this it's more than what they do in the open the strength of their priesthood so the first thing satan fights is your covenant connection when Satan, because don't forget that he was once in heaven he knows that nothing supernatural happens in the life of a man like that if you are a man of god and there is great grace upon your life satan will scan through where is the point of your consecration where is the point of your covenant that is his first point of attack represented in the hair of samson you are a worshiper and songs are coming from the spirit there has to be a covenant somewhere that connects that ladder to heaven when satan comes satan does not attack everything every time he looks for the most important thing what connects you to the realm of the spirit in this case your relationship with god and your relationship with those who are connected to god number two he finds your access to light the eyes of samson was plucked away so that you would never have to see anything again that can help him and then number three he was bound limitations when satan does these three things 
he can put you and begin to mock you they took Samson who was the warrior of Israel and they brought him and an idol before an idol but now here's where I'm going to Samson showed that there is something about God they did not know the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate he is slow to anger and rich in love I may not have eyes again to see my hair may be limited I may be bound hand and foot in chain but there is a God who is merciful and while Samson stood before those walls he began to pray a prayer somebody needs to pray tonight and he prayed a prayer of mercy and suddenly the Bible records help that man please in the name of Jesus Christ there is one thing I know about God the moment a man becomes broken and contrite the Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him those who have a broken and a contract spirit to be broken means to come to a point where you acknowledge that outside of his assistance you are limited until you can swallow that pride you cannot secure the mercy of God as abundant as the mercy of God is there is a condition that activates it the administration of God's mercy demands that there must be brokenness there are people here under the sound of my voice inside this precious auditorium outside and thousands potentially millions of others listening and watching by way of television by way of internet or by way of a rebroadcast you have heard me preach you've heard the lord speak through this man of god and he's telling you that you need a renewal of your relationship for some of you who are feared or for whatever reason and then those who need to make Jesus Lord of their lives genuinely this is more than an initiation into a Christian faith this is about a relationship that becomes your principal point of connection even to the supernatural here's what the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever so that blessing is for whosoever believes in him that that individual should not perish but have everlasting life he said for god did not send his son to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him everyone who is in christ must have gotten to a point in his life where he made this decision and hear me here at peniel 2022 the spirit of grace again one more time is moving across the length and the breadth of this auditorium and from this auditorium to the nations of the earth and he's calling for people i'm going to make an altar call two in one but please this is not an emotional call you must understand the nature and the character of this call there are people here who have never made it right with jesus perhaps you were invited perhaps you've attended the previous sessions and you're saying apostle while i heard you speak it was like fire in my bones i know that i need an experience with god or those who are saying apostle i remember walking with god once but right now if i am to be honest my life has gone haywire i cannot say i'm a christian but like samson you can find hope tonight i'm going to count one to five by now you should know if you should come out here or sit and if i count one to five i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before jesus here let's celebrate them as they come one Someone is coming. Jesus, something special, supernatural about your name. Jesus, something happens when I mention three are you coming please if you're coming hurry up let's celebrate them as they come let's celebrate them as they come Jesus said ye must be born again that if you reject him before men 
on that day he will reject you even before his father i have loved you with an everlasting love he says and i have drawn you with my loving kindness young and old rich and poor male and female jalingo jesus is calling come come to jesus come to jesus he's able to give you a new beginning you've trusted other things of lesser value trust him with your life hallelujah are you coming i salute every one of you male and female some of you are crying there's nothing to be ashamed of we stand before him the king of kings and the lord of lords the one who is able to show men mercy and the anglican communion has put this together to give jesus an opportunity to again visit this land such an honor to have such a harvest of souls young old this is what the gospel is about the power of god that is unto salvation for everyone who believes now please hear me i'm going to lead you to pray very quickly but whilst that is happening you would notice that there are counselors who are passing asleep you don't have to be distracted counselors you don't have to be distracted just pass the sleep and then they pass it to the front or you can give those in front to help so whilst you are praying as the sleep gets to you just gently pick it up and then pass it to another person i want to lead you to pray now the bible says in romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 that the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart even the word of faith that we preach that if you confess the lordship of jesus and you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead that you shall be saved for the law is that with the mouth with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation please suspend feeling this form please suspend it for a while counselors let's just be patient let me lead them to pray please suspend feeling the form for a minute may i request that you lift your right hand if you can as a sign of surrender and i'd like you to repeat after me you're not reciting a poem jesus christ is in this place and he's ready to hear he's ready to heal he's ready to receive say after me lord jesus one more time shout it say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you thank you for this harvest of these precious souls and we thank you because only you are able to save these precious people they have come to you and based on the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare in jesus name that you are recipients of the life of god from tonight the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now please look at me there are a number of you so i will plead that as you move you move carefully so you don't enjoy yourself do take note of the cranes so that you don't enjoy yourself and then help the children while you move where are they to move please direct me someone okay so all of you in concert may i request that you move to my right there are counselors waving their hands as we clap for you all of you will just move they would attend to you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them as they go jalingo is this the best you can do keep clapping until they go No 
your shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down The overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming Let me speak over your life now And then we're done for tonight Please hear me Just an encouragement You have a duty tomorrow Do not come alone Do the work of an evangelist don't say there's a crowd of people everywhere inside if there is no space we'll plead with bishop to allow you sit even if it's on the roof hallelujah but your destiny will have to change so go around the city of jalingo and cry like john the baptist in the wilderness let them know that the fire of revival has come to your city hallelujah men women families business people those in government politicians gather um your colleagues I'm, I'm so honored to have in the number of the honorable members i was told here and so that somewhere in the service will have the privilege of praying and speaking over these people it's not enough to say they are not doing well we must pray and protect and cover them pro prophetically hallelujah and then do not forget the prayer request please do well to come with it and even for your loved ones who are in diaspora or outside of this location they can send it to you by way of text or whatever and then you can write it down somewhere in the course of the service uh, there's a session in the morning and then the evening session will have the opportunity to pray but let me speak over your life and when i pray i want you to shout a believing amen in the name of jesus i decree and declare over the spiritual atmosphere of jalingo let the heavens be open for encounters tonight visionary prophetic encounters angelic encounters divine encounters in the name of jesus christ hear me whatever represents pain and sadness that you left to come here I decree and declare on your way back me testimonies waiting for you I stand by the God of heaven and I speak to you some of you before 12 midnight this night strange testimonies will be waiting for you There are many of you that my God, who is also your God, is opening a book of remembrance this night. And hear me, anyone who has mocked your God and said, where is your God? In this conference, the God of heaven is about to answer them. In the name of Jesus. And the prophet declared even over Samaria and he said by this time tomorrow and someone laughed at him and the Bible says that person saw it but he fell at the gate of the city I declare to someone in the name of him who died and rose again literally by this time tomorrow you return rejoicing
you return with songs of joy you return with songs of victory in the name of Jesus Christ and we announce by way of prophecy Charlene go hear the word of the Lord this season and this week is declared a week of revival a week of fire a week of impartation a week of reawakening in the name of Jesus Christ as you return back home I declare that you will not be a victim of any kidnapping any violence on the road you are separated even by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus and for your sake your loved ones who are not here because you are here may the angel of his presence also touch them in jesus name i pray put your hands together for jesus hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.